soundcheck program, like all of our free live stream events, is supported by your donations to the Community Arts Fund. You can keep the series going by donating at camdenoperahouse.com. And if you have already, thank you so much. We really appreciate that. Tonight's performance is sponsored by our friends at the Oyster River Wine Growers, who have a winery in Warren and a tasting room right next door to the Opera House, where you can stop in for a glass of wine before the show. So thank you, Joanna. And I also want to thank our staff and our volunteers who are just the absolute best. I want to thank Juniper and Luke and Dagny and Beth and Matt and everyone who helped, helped you to get seated and brought you in. Um, we couldn't do it without them, so thank you to them. Okay, tonight we have the pleasure of welcoming back some good friends. The last time they were here... They helped us to close out 2020, and tonight they bring beautiful music and stories to, dare I say it, welcome spring. Please join me in welcoming Castle Bay. Thank you. I think there's really people out there. There are. And the heck with spring, I'm thinking summer here. <laughs> Let's think positively. <clears throat> well, um, as we have been preparing for these concerts, uh, originally it was going to be in January um, and sort of a winter concert. And then, and then we said, well, it'll be in March. It'll be a spring concert. And in the interim, we have released our book of seafaring songs. <laughs> Thank you, uh, and it's, a, a, it's a more than 10 years work of uh, collecting these songs and, and uh, polishing them off. We've gone into archives and, and uh, listened to scratchy recordings and, and through no fault of our own got all kinds of publicity on NPR, which was exciting. Um, so we thought, well, let's just ride this pony <laughs> and we'll give you some songs from that book of seafaring songs of ships and sailors, all originating here in Maine, and uh, some of our own seafaring songs as well. So I was just going to take you back in time a little bit to when I was a kid. Um, I used to go down to the harbor, a new harbor, and uh, hang out at the co-op. My brother and I would take our fishing lines and go down and, and hang out with the old guys at the fishing co-op, and, and uh, we would bother them, and they would kind of keep an eye on us. And, and they told us lots of old stories and songs. And uh, that was about, I was about five when I was doing this and realized that it was something I really wanted to pay attention to. And Fred heard songs from his grandfather <clears throat> out in the lumber woods. So he was inspired as well. But all of those songs were unaccompanied. They were, there were no instruments. There were no fiddles. There were no harmonicas even, just voices singing. So we're going to start with an a cappella song um, dedicated to those guys. This is a song I wrote. Those guys were real lovers of art and the fine oh, things of oh, life. Oh, that's right. And they, there were posters of beautiful women in the Fisherman's Co-op. <coughs> yes. And also a poster that said, cows may come and cows may go, but the bull in here goes on forever. <laughs> so It was great, yeah. <laughs> so um, there were four of them. There was Julian Beale. Uh, Manley Gilbert, uh, Frankie Osier, who was my great uncle, and um, Paul Riley. So this is for them. <clears throat> and you're welcome to join us in singing. <clears throat> oh, what has become of the old liars all? Julian and Manley and Frankie and Paul. Down at the co-op when fish weren't so few. They'd lie through their teeth. And they'd swear it was true. On warm afternoons in the summer we'd go with hand line and bucket to the harbor below. To the dock with the rope and the chains and the spars where the weathered old plank smelled of bait and of tar. The fish house was piled high with old fishing gear and a sign that said something about all the bull here. In a big leather armchair, a white-haired old man would give us a soda and a handful of clams. Oh, what has become of the old liars all, Julian and Manley and Frankie and Paul, 
down at the co-op when fish weren't so few. They'd lie for their teeth and they'd swear it was true. Sometimes there were others who sat in the shack just telling us stories of fishing way back when the weather was better or worse than right now. They always would say it was bigger somehow. They'd tell of the days when they hauled traps by hand out in their dories away from the land. In the winter they'd row till their hands would turn blue and some of the stories you knew could be true. Oh, what has become of the old liars all? Julian and Manly and Frankie and Paul. Down at the co-op when fish weren't so few. They'd lie through their teeth and they'd swear it was true. But then they'd continue with never a smile and tell of the day when they rode 50 miles, blinded by fog banks and capsized by storms, then rescued by mermaids with gold on their arms. Then there was the one about the fisherman's ghost, doomed to eternity cause of a boast. His coming would warn all the sailors of gales, the wilder the weather, the stranger their tales. Oh, what has become of the old liars all, Julian and Manly and Frankie and Paul, down at the co-op when fish weren't so few. They'd lie through their teeth and they'd swear it was true. Then we'd run down the gangplank and bait up our lines and drop the weight down where the flounder are fine. We'd wait for that tug that sometimes never came. So we'd go up and bother the old men again. Well, now that they're gone, I feel empty inside. Though people will tell me their jaw was all lies. Their tales were as true as the tide and the breeze. My children will never hear stories like these. Oh, what has become of the old liars all? Julian and Manly and Frankie and Paul. Down at the co-op when fish weren't so few. They'd lie through their teeth and they'd swear it was true. The old liars. All right, thank you. Well, this, this next song was uh, collected by, uh, from Susie Carr Young from Brewer, Maine in 1925. She called it the Sailors Come All You, which is probably not the name it had, but that's what she called it, so that's what it is in the books. <laughs> and it's, uh, we can trace its origins back to the 1600s when there were all these songs about, about sailors and how great it was to be a sailor and girls make sure you marry a sailor because they're honest and they make plenty of money and those farmers forget about the farmers. <clears throat> and there are all these songs that show up in these uh, traditional repertoire that uh, echo this, that story. So this one's called The Sailor's Come All Ye. Oh, come all ye pretty fair maids if you did but know all the dangers and the hardships that sailors
does come round, the wind begins to blow. Our captain, he commands us all, call there from down below. Call there from down below, me boys, prepare our ship to ride. Aloft, aloft, ye lively lads, and down to Gansel Yard. Oh, the seas, they run mountains high and toss us up and down. In the midst of all these dangers, boys, we're feared our ship will drown. But don't let that discourage us, boys, we'll see the girls again. For the might of all America will cross the region. Oh, we'll sail to all parts of the world that's never seen before. And we'll bring back gold and silver, boys, that's when we do return. We'll make this country flourish, boys, like it never did before. And when our money's spent and gone, we'll plow the seas for more. Uh, thank you. We find a lot of these, uh, these seafaring songs inland, and uh, it's so interesting to me that the, the, the terms and the experiences are still really rich and, and descriptive, even in the inland versions. And what would happen is that the sailors would uh, exchange places with the lumbermen and go inland and work in the lumber woods and then go back to sea. So they brought the songs back and forth with them. Uh, this song, and, and the other interesting thing is they're collected by women. And even though the women collected the songs, they still retained the details of seafaring life. So here's one uh, from Annie Marston uh, from West Goldsboro, 1829, excuse me, 1929, collected by Fanny Ekstorm. And it's about the green bed. The green bed is a special place for the people of privilege in the inn, particularly the men, came with uh, perks, sometimes the landlord's daughter. So uh, this is about the green bed, and it has a detail about the money in it also. also. Yeah, the money, it talk, talks about old money and new money, and in America here, there was a change in the money in 1735. In the UK or England, whatever it was called back then, <laughs> there, there was a change in the money in 1690 and again in 1810, I think, and then another one later in the 19th century. So this song probably dates from either 1810 or 1735. And uh, it may or may not have a happy ending. It depends on your point of view. It's of a young sea captain who had lately come ashore. He went up to an alehouse where he had been before. You are welcome home, young Johnny. You are welcome home from sea. Last night, my daughter Polly was dreaming of thee. What luck had you, young Johnny? What luck, oh, tell to me. Oh, I lost my ship and cargo along the raging sea. Along the wide Atlantic, my ship and cargo crossed. All on the wide Atlantic, my ship and cargo lost. But bring down pretty Polly, I'll set her on my knee. Yes, bring down pretty Polly, and married we will be. Daughter, she is absent, oh, she has gone away. And if she were at home, John, she would not let you stay. Now, when John, he heard this, oh, he hung down his head. He called for a candle to light him to bed. Oh, beds, they are all full, John, this fortnight more. And you are not welcome. Very 
looked upon the landlord, oh, he looked upon them all. And then for his reckoning so loudly he did call. Twenty shillings of the new John and thirty of the old young John. He then pulled out both hands full of gold. Then in came pretty Polly, all with a smiling face. She gave him three kisses likewise a fond embrace. You are welcome home, young Johnny. You are welcome home from sea. The green bed is waiting for you, young Johnny. Well, as for your green bed, I would rather lie in the street. When you thought I had no money, my lodgings I might seek. Now I've money in both pockets, and I'll make the taverns whirl with a bottle of good brandy and on each knee a girl. So all of you young sailors, go on and take by me. Be careful of your money when you return from sea. Be careful of your money and lay it up in store. For if you do not, they will drive you. Thank you. The green bed. Well, there are, are many, many songs about sailors and their girlfriends and their adventures with same. Uh, some of them returning to faithful girls and some not. Um, in this case, this fellow is an English sailor, and we can tell that by the fact that he's called a tarry sailor. The uh, English sailors wore tar in their hair to keep it out of their faces. They wore a long queue in the back, a braid, whereas the um, American sailors had a crew cut. This was all to keep down the lice, of course. Um, but this tarry sailor has been to sea and come home with pockets full of gold. And it was possible if you managed to survive and signed the articles on a British ship, you were entitled to a share of the prizes. So if you were on a warship that took a few prizes, you could really come back with some significant money as a common sailor. Right, and this was sung by Charles Finnamore from Bridgewater, Maine. In 1942. Yeah. I went walking when I overheard my own true love and her old father talking, saying, Jack, your true love, he's come ashore. He is the one that you adore. But silly Nancy, your trips are o'er. You'll not wed with a tarry sailor. And he said, my lovely Nancy, do you think I would come home from sea to my heart's delight and fancy? I have been where the raging billows roar and oft times face the daring foe. So answer me quickly, yes or no, will you wet with a tarry sailor? father was standing there, and that Jack was a gawking. He said, young man, you might as well be gone as to stand here and be talking. For my daughter, she is far too young, and the sailor has a flattering tongue. Quit my presence and be gone, she'll not wet with a tarry sailor. But 
Jack spoke up just as bold as could be, and he said, my lovely Nancy, do you think I would come home from sea with both my pockets empty? Then on the table, so I've been told, he placed 5,000 in sparkling gold. He dropped it right into a rape with mold. Take this from a diary sailor. father was standing there when he saw Jack act so clever. Since you have given her all your store, oh now Jack, you may have her. And since you've given her all your store, I'll double that and ten times more. I'll double that and ten times more. Although you're a Tari Sailor. <laughs> Tari Sailor. Thank you. All right. Well, some of these some of these songs are actually based on real historical fact, and uh, it's oh, it's been fascinating tracking down the the sources of some of the stories in the songs. Um, initially, that was what attracted me to these songs were the stories and the fact that they might actually have historic um, significance. Um, this one was a wonderful surprise. Um, sung by Will Merritt in Ludlow. And it's about um, Lord Franklin, who was looking for the Northwest Passage uh, through to, uh, Europe, to, from Europe to, uh, to the, East, the, West, the East Indies. <laughs> the East Indies. Um, and there were a number of, of um, explorers who went up through there. Hudson, actually, that was what he was looking for. Um, and this case, uh, Franklin left uh, England in uh, 1845 with two ships and was never never heard from again. Um, recently, and some of you may know this, there was a, a discovery of his ships, um, the wrecks of his ships, and uh, they were in a place that nobody expected. Um, the Inuit knew where they were all the time, but nobody would believe them. Um, so in any case, uh, his wife, Franklin's wife, um, put out a reward for anyone who could provide information about Lord Franklin. And there were many songs written about this adventure. Some of them are positively dreadful. Uh, we got lucky, we got one of the good ones. Uh, so here is The Fate of Franklin. <clears throat> Some people think that she actually wrote this one, <laughs> but we have no proof of that. And they used to sing unaccompanied, so they didn't have this problem of tuning. <laughs> I was in tune when I bought it. Right, there we go. Okay. Okay, the fate of Franklin. <clears throat> Seek the north 
western passage through to seek a passage around the pole where lightning flashes and thunder rolls it's so much more than a man can do though hearts undaunted and courage true Captain Kelly of Sedgwick Town, I'm Captain Osborne of high renown, and Dr. Tate, like so many more, that's long been cruising the Arctic shore. Oh, they sailed east and they sailed west from Greenland's island, where they fought fast. They met with hardships and vainly strove through mountains of ice where the ship was stowed. Thanks very much. <clears throat> it's really interesting when we're listening to these, these, some of them are audio recordings, some of them are just manuscripts and we're trying to decipher them. <clears throat> but when you come across a song like that that's just so beautiful and moving, it's, it's worth it. <laughs> it's worth listening to all the crackly old tapes. Um, so here's a new song. <clears throat> Fairly new anyway. Um, we used to live down near Pemico Beach and, and the port. And one day, our son, who was 10 or 11 at the time, came running home and said, Mom, I heard this great story from this old guy on shore <laughs> about a ghost ship that sails down John's Bay and there's nobody aboard. Ooh, yeah. And this was way before Johnny Depp. This was, uh, my son's in his 40s now. But <clears throat> um, and I thought, boy, I haven't, hadn't heard that story when, when the old liars were, were telling me old stories, but um, I thought this one deserved a song. And it's, it's probably, uh, its origin was probably the Angel Gabriel, which, which was a, a shipwreck in um, John's Bay in 1635. Anyway, <clears throat> this is the Phantom Ship. <laughs> That was pretty ghostly, Fred. <laughs> Ghastly, I might say. <laughs> Gotta have my gear shift here. There we go. All right. Are you ready now? I hope All right. So. <clears throat> Shine away, shine away, a light to guide them all. 
upon that moonlit ship did you see a man who stood so tall upon the deck with sailors at command standing tall standing tall with sailors at command standing tall standing tall so strong of voice and hand alas i saw no captain brave standing tall and true who indeed i saw not a soul on board neither captain nor crew not a soul not a soul and in that the ship as she flew not a soul, not a soul, and the wind in the rigging Here's another local song, and uh, and uh, we don't do it very often because it's got a bunch of place names in it, and we'd have to explain it. But we don't have to explain it That's to you. That's right. Um, are there any schooner folk out there? There must be at least one. Okay. Uh huh. <clears throat> well, again, when I was I was young, um, down at Pamukwud Beach, the schooners used to come in to Pamukwud Beach, uh, and uh, they would they'd drop anchor and come ashore and have lobster and. It was always a great event to see these schooners coming down John's Bay. Um, I watched the Victory Chimes come through the Thread of Life, which is a group of islands um, off of South Bristol. And it was absolutely terrifying to see them. You had to have, I guess you had to have the, the, right, um, the right tide and the right wind to get through there. But um, it, there's a reference to coming through the Thread of Life, and that was kind of inspired by that experience of seeing the victory chimes come through there. Anything else in there? It's kind of based on a bunch of old salty tales. Um, I actually wrote it in self-defense so we wouldn't, when we're traveling, we don't have to tell all those stock main stories. They just <laughs> roll them into the song. But it's taken on a life of its own. It's about this uh, captain named Cappy John. And uh, some of you may know him. But uh, so this is the ballad of Cappy John. <clears throat> He had one eye on the waves, the other on the weather. He saw more with his swivel eye than all of us together. He'd find his way on a moonless night, dark as a dungeon cell. And when the fog was thick as soup, he'd navigate by smell. <laughs> Now come all you brave schooner boys who sail the coast of Maine. Listen to my story and join in the refrain. It's all about a skipper, the best we ever knew. He sailed a stout for master with a tough and jolly crew. Many a tale that I could tell you never would believe. Like coming into Pemaquid in a stiff southeasterly breeze. To sail with him, the thread of life took the courage of a saint. For he'd take the barnacles off her hull, but he never touched the paint. He had one eye on the waves, the other on the weather. He saw more with his swivel eye than all of us together. He find his way on a moonless night, dark as a dungeon cell. And when, when the fog was thick as soup, he'd navigate by spell. Now the tale that I will tell you began the regular way. Going to Yarmouth town, we passed the Mary L. McKay. We left her cargo on the dock and then stood up for sea when we met her staggering into port like a drunkard on the spree. Things were fine, we're making time on the wind from the nor'east. When Cappy John says, Gory boys, I don't like this in the least. I can tell by the sky and the look of the foam that when the sun goes down, 
gonna be in for a hell of a fog Or I ain't Cappy John He had one eye on the waves The other on the weather He saw more with his swivel eye Than all of us together He find his way out of the night Dark as a dungeon cell And when the fog was to get so he navigate by spell Well, we've been with Cappy and Fog before, so we weren't worried none. We figured that we'd make Portland by the rising of the sun. So we stood our watches with hearts as light as swallows in the spring. Didn't know Cappy had caught a cold that he couldn't spell a thing. And Cappy, he didn't let on none. Why, God only knows. Maybe he figured to steer by sound and wouldn't need his nose. And he didn't tell us to shorten sail, though we might have heard him sneeze. We plowed right into that bank of fog like a maggot into a cheese. He had one eye on the waves, the other on the weather. He saw more with his cruel eye than all of us together. He find his way in a moonless night dark as a dungeon cell. And when the fog was thick as soon, he'd navigate by spell. Then Cappy Hollers, look sharp, boys, up here we're close to land. But that fog, it was so galder and thick, you couldn't see your hand. And the ship was sailing very queer, up great rough seas and down. We heard strange sounds like moaning ghosts of sailors who'd been drowned. When the sun came up, it was off our stern, instead of the larboard side. And Mr. Mad, I'll have you know, we'd been on a hell of a ride. We stood in a field five miles from shore, captain, ship, and crew. He lost his way because he couldn't smell, but he brought us in on the dew. He had one eye on the waves, the other on the weather. He saw more with his little eye than all of us together. He'd find his way out of moonless night dark as a dungeon cell. And when the fog was thick as soup, he'd navigate by smell. Happy <laughs> John. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so as you can tell, this tradition is alive and well. Um, this next song really requires some explanation. There's a couple of things in it that are, well, there's many things. The whole song is pretty strange. Um, it's one of the few songs where we, refer we find reference to a person of color. And this person is the hero in the song. Um, interestingly, in all of these literally thousands of songs that we've listened to, I have not heard the N-word once. Not once. Um, there's, there seems to be very little racism. Lots of sexism, but not a lot of racism in these songs, uh, which is, is interesting. There were black sailors on these ships, and uh, many times they, their job was as the cook. So, we surmise this song may be from around 1830 um, because it's about selling cadavers. And, <laughs> and the, no, he doesn't eat, he doesn't cook the cadaver, okay? <laughs> but uh, That's kind of 1830-31 was when Burke, the notorious Burke and Hare, who were body snatchers in Scotland, were apprehended creating bodies to sell and executed. And, and why it. were they selling the bodies, Fred? They were selling the bodies because you could not legally obtain a body unless it was, it was somebody executed for a heinous crime that had not received the last rites. And why would you want a body? Well, for science, of course. <laughs> yes. So they were, these were for anatomy purposes. Um, so it, they, in, in 1831 or two, they passed the Anatomy Act, where it made it easier for people to donate bodies to science. Right, so uh, that being said, this is the Black Cook. Let's see, we're in G, right? Come all jolly sailors, I pray pay attention concerning a doctor who lived in Cork Town, who by some young seamen was duly outwitted, and fifty bright guineas he had to pay down. There were some jolly tars with their comrades a grugging. Their money being spent and their credit far gone. From Wexford Street down to the docks they had wandered, saying that they were bound to have whiskey or fun. 
Now the cook of our ship was a stout table fellow, a stout table fellow, his color was black. For wit and for wisdom, he always was ready to find a receipt and get all the change back. He said, my brave boys, I have heard people saying, a corpse can be sold quite readily here. So take me alive, wrap me up in the hammock, and sell me to buy us the whiskey and beer. Well, the sailors were glad to accept of his offer and steered to the house where the doctor did dwell. And into his ear they did whisper so gently, saying, Doctor, we have some mine corpse for the cell. Fine corpse, cried the doctor like one in amazement. Oh, where did you get him? Come tell to me, pray. If you bring him here, I will buy him quite ready, and fifty bright guineas to you I will pay. Well, the sailors were glad to accept of his offer, and back to the ship they so boldly did steer. If you pay attention to what I now mention, the best of my story you quickly shall hear. They took the black cook, wrapped him up in his hammock, he being a fellow both sturdy and strong. But under his coat, by the way of protection, they placed a large knife about half a yard long. Now midnight came on, and the streets being empty, the sailors set out with the cook on their back. When they came to the house where the doctor resided, it's in a back room they concealed the poor black. The doctor, he paid down the sailors their money. They told him the cook, he had died while at sea. And rather than have his dead body to bury, we've sold him to you, now he's out of our way. Well, the doctor went off with his tools to dissect him and quickly came back with a saw in his hand. But when he came back with his tools to dissect him, the black with his cut slash before him did stand. The doctor was forced to retreat in a hurry, and soon of his bargain began to lament. The cookie went off with his comrades a grugging. The rest of the evening was merrily spent. Another one from Charles Finnamore, who, who actually, um, over a hundred songs were collected from this man, Charles Finnamore in Bridgewater. Um, he, was, he worked on the railroad. He wasn't a lumberman. He just worked on the railroad in Bridgewater, and he just was this incredible resource for these songs. Um, he was collected by um, Helen Hartness Flanders, who was from Vermont, and she went around New England with her rickety old car and her friend um, Marguerite Olney um, on their own nickel in the early 40s, 1940. They went around New England uh, collecting these songs on an old, many old uh, recording technologies, about five different kinds of recording technology. She, re she collected over 900 songs from Maine. So we've been tapping that resource and Charles Fenimore is a wonderful Wonderful uh, um, uh, well of beautiful songs. So, so this, The Black this, Cook. This next song is, uh, hmm? this next song uh, was created as a poem, but it escaped almost immediately and went into the oral tradition and over the last 110 years has accumulated some errors as it's passed from place to place. So we went back to the original poem to try and correct some of their geographical uh, mistakes. And one of the, one fun thing about this is the, uh, the name of the ship has been changed to preserve the guilt, to, uh, to uh, protect the guilty. So the, the song is actually about the Effie Morrissey. <laughs> the Effie Morrissey, who is now called the Ernestina. And Ernestina is now the uh, flagship of this, the uh, state of Massachusetts and is being refitted over in Booth Bay Harbor. But for the purposes of, this, of the song and the poem, she was called 
the Mary Ellen McKay. McKay. Oh, and the chorus is storm along, drive along, punch her through the rips, the rip tides. Don't heed those boarding combers. Those are the green waves as the sea. Don't heed the boarding combers as, as, <laughs> as the solid sea she ships. Solid green she ships. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Would fill your heart with terror, and you'd wish you were away at home in bed and not, not aboard. aboard the Mary Al McKay. And think about did you did you mention prohibition? No, okay. it's not germane. Yes, it is. Well, I don't think it is. <laughs> it's not about Portland rum. You could you could make rum in Portland, but you couldn't drink it in Portland. Oh, come all ye hardy haddockers who went to fish and go, and brave the seas upon the banks in stormy winds and snow. And you who love hard driving, come and listen to my lay of the run we made from Portland on the Mary L. McKay. We hung the muslin on her as the wind began to hum. Twenty hearty Nova Scotia boys chock full of Portland rum. Mainsail, foresail, jib, and jumbo on that wild December day as we passed Cape Elizabeth and slug for Bundy Bay. Storm along, drive along, punch her through the rips. Don't heed those boarding combers as the solid green she ships. Don't fill your heart with terror and you wish you were away at, at home in bed and not for the merry We slugged her past Monhegan and the wind began to scream. Our vessel started dancing in a way that was no dream. A howler o'er the top so we hear her east away. Oh, she was a hound for running, was the Mary L. McKay. When we slammed her past Matinicus, the skipper hauled the log. Sixteen knots, Lord Harry, and she just a gal to jog. The half can steersman shouted as he swung her on her way. Just watch me tear the mainsail off the Mary L. McKay. Storm along, drive along, crush her through the rips. Don't heed those morning combers as the solid green she ships. Don't fill your heart with terror and you wish you were away. At home in bed and not aboard the Mary L. McKay. Well, the rum was passing merrily, the gang was feeling grand. Long necks dancing in our wake from where we'd left the land. Tripper, he steps over, for he knew how things would lay, and he made us furl a mainsail on the Mary L. McKay. Under foresail, jib, and jumbo, we tore wildly through the night. The surgeon foam in white caps in the moonshine made a sight. And in that wild inferno, boys, we soon had held to pay. But we didn't give a hoot aboard the Mary L. McKay. Storm along, drive along, punch her through the rips. Don't hit those boarding combers as the solid green she ships. Lashed a helmsman to the box as he steered through the gloom. A big sea hove his dory made right over the main boom. It tore the oil pants off his legs, and you could hear him say, There's a power of water flying for the Mary L. McKay. Now the skipper didn't care to make his wife a widow yet. We swung her off to Yarmouth Cape with just a full set. We passed for two next morning and shot in the break of day. And soon in sheltered harbor lay the Mary L. McKay. Go along, drive along, punch her through the rips. Don't heed those boarding combers as the solid green she ships. Don't fill your heart with terror. From Portland, Maine to Yarmouth Cape, to 20 miles we ran. In 18 hours, me bully boys, now beat that if you can. The crew said it was seamanship, the skipper he kept dumb. 
But the power that drove our vessel was the power of port and rum. Storm along, drive along, punch her through the rips. Don't heed those morning combers as the sun reach she ships. words, lots of words. They had a lot more time in those days. We found one song that it was just amazing. I think there were 27 verses. 27, 34, what's the difference? It was, it was well, epic, epic. And we, we had to kind of adapt it a little bit because there were actually some parts of it missing. Um, and it was about these two, tw these twin brothers who were, um, one was a pirate and one was an upstanding captain. And they both were in love with the same girl. Of course. You can imagine the But that's intrigue. a song for another time. It is, but I'm just saying that there were, it was like, it was like soap operas, you know, from nowhere comes Uncle George. And uh, what's he doing here? So some of these songs are, are really fascinating to, just to read the lyrics. And, uh, and to track down the sources of them. It's been really, really interesting. Um, so you do have some flyers, I think, that have our contact information and um, a little ad for the book, if you're interested in this, this tome. Um, it is volume one. Volume two is going to be uh, probably, oh, farming and forest, maybe, something like that. We'll see. We've still got a bunch of songs to listen to. So, um, but that's for another time. Well, this, this song is uh, one of the Dreadnought songs. Um, and unlike all of the other Dreadnought songs we have heard, or that any of our colleagues have heard. So what is the Dreadnought, Fred? The Dreadnought was a North Atlantic packet built in 1853, I believe, under the watchful eye of her captain, Samuel Samuels, Samuel Samuels, whose mother had no imagination. I think it was his father, Fred. Anyway, he, <laughs> he was quoted as his saying... His mother wouldn't have named him that. <laughs> his, uh, he was quoted as saying he should sail her to fame or he should sail her under. So, yeah. And uh, amazing, amazing. Anyway, he made a, a run from, from New York to Liverpool in... Nine less days. Nine, days. nine days and 13 hours, something like that, from the time they left New York till the time they met the mail boat. So it was quite, a, quite an accomplishment in those days. Quickly beaten by the Red Jacket, but that's another Who story. Who was out of Rockland. Yes, the Red Jacket. The, uh, we need to write a song about the Red Jacket. Yeah, the, the Dreadnought was built in uh, Newburyport. And the song was collected from Oliver Jeunesse in York, Maine in 1942. Um, his version is the only one where she's sailing east, all the others she's sailing west. Which makes no sense because her record run was from New York to Liverpool. So we think that this probably was one of the original versions of this song called the Dreadnought. And the chorus goes, bound away, bound away when the stormy winds blow, bound away in the Dreadnought, to the eastward we go. Bound away, bound away, where the stormy winds blow. Bound away in the red knot to the east and we go. Bound away, bound away, where the stormy winds blow. Bound away in the red knot to the east and we go. The day of our sailing is fast drawing night. And you, my dear sweetheart, I'll bid you goodbye. Good luck to New York. My friends here bound the way in the direct knot to the east and we steer bound the way. The sea bound away, bound away, where the stormy winds blow, bound away in the dreadnought to the east and we go. And now we 
are sailing off the shore of Newfoundland Where the waters change colour and the bottom is sand Where the fish of the ocean swim about to and fro Bound away in the dreadnought to the east as we go Bound away, bound away Where the stormy winds blow Bound away in the dreadnought to the east as we go And now we are sailing on the ocean so wide When the mighty blue billows rush against our dark side Our sails neatly trim, the red cross to show Bound away in the dreadnought to the east as we go Bound away, bound away Where the stormy winds blow Bound away in the dreadnought to the east as we go There's a help to the dreadnought and her jolly crew Likewise, Captain Samuels and the officers too You may speak of your packet, red line and black ball But the dreadnought is the packet that can outsail them all Bound away, bound away Where the stormy winds blow Bound away in the dreadnought to the east as we go Bound away, bound away Where the stormy winds blow Bound away in the dreadnought to the east Thank you. Great to hear you sing. And I have to say, that's one reason we, we made this book, was for people to, to see the songs and learn the lyrics and to sing them. They are, they're not meant to be locked up in old scratchy recordings and old manuscripts. They're meant to be sung. So we're really looking forward to hearing other people sing these songs and give them their own spin. That's the, the folk process, is to take an old song and give it a new spin. We've so, done that. Yes, we have. Um, and um, we want to thank you so very much for coming out this evening. It's, uh, it's been a long haul for us to not be able to do live performances. Zoom is OK, but it's just not the same. <laughs> we need those warm bodies. We need to hear those voices singing. And, and we need to gather together and sing. And I want to thank you so much for coming out and doing that with us. And thank you so much to the Camden Opera House. Opera House. Yay. Give them a big... <laughs> Woohoo. Yes, they've been carrying on in spite of. And it's just, that's what needs to happen. Um, and to the um, Oyster River wine... Grower. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. I've never had oyster wine. Wine growers, okay? <laughs> Oyster River wine growers, thank you. Yeah, um, I've got to try some of that. It's uh, be really interesting um, some evening. Anyway. Um, so we thought we'd finish <coughs> up with a song Julia wrote a few years ago for her dad. And it's been used for everything from graduations to weddings to memorial services ever since. <laughs> Uh, there was even an a good eight, song can stand a lot of abuse. As they there say. was even an eight-part choral arrangement done by the uh, Choral Arts Society down in uh, Portland one time. Yeah, that was great. That was um, kind of amazing. It was wonderful to hear that song taken and someone to arranged by others, um, and it has an Irish flavor. And it's an interesting thing to me is that so much of the music here in Maine does have that Irish flavor. Um, these, those wonderful uh, humorous patter songs and the, the little tunes like Larry O'Gaff that we played with the, the Black Cook, little dance tunes that get sort of woven in amongst these songs. So, so there is an Irish flavor to Maine traditional music. Um, anyway, this is uh, a, a wish for you. If you're a sailor, you know that to run before the wind is to be to be pushed into the future in an effortless way by the wind following you, filling your sails. And uh, we'd wish that for you. May you always run before the wind. <clears throat> Find a kind in this 
listening ear May the stranger think of you as kin May the stars shine bright May the dawn come clear May you always run before the wind And if the world turns you upside down Remember he keeps turning round Home, Thank everyone. You. Thank you so much. Thanks very much. <laughs>